Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Terramina. Welcome to OAA Now here on Sammy Tina Blog around the OAA, the host of the last three brain cells and the host between Terminus on Oriented Intelligence. I'd like to welcome those watching on the local voice on SoundCon and those watching Oriented Intelligence. Happy 4th of July, everybody here. Um, this week, we got three very good football coaches talking to us this week here on the podcast, starting with the coach of the act, the Pontiac Phoenix, Coach Wendell Jefferson. Coach, um, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, when you look at you guys last year, I mean, like, obviously, you had that long losing streak, and then Mass and Heights Bishop Foley came in. You snapped that streak. Um, talk about, you know, that game, and then also talk about recapping last season. Well, in that game, it was a, uh, you know, it was a game that we we didn't know what was going to happen. We know we put in a lot of hard work, uh, and we we did the best we could to prepare these guys uh, for the season. Uh, it just it just happened for us that first game. Uh, all the work paid off, uh, and the guys performed well. Uh, we had a couple outstanding performances from a, a couple of our key guys, the veterans. And that really propelled us to the win. I think that it just—I think it was an energy um, that these guys uh, fed off of each other, and, and led us to our victory on that. Uh, as far as the season go, we we, we continued that streak, uh, and we won uh, two two more games. Uh, we continued to play hard, play play well together, and then as the season went on, um, we kind of reverted to a, a few bad habits. Um, but we also went against some really good competition. Uh, so I'm very, overall the season, I'm, I'm pleased with what we accomplished. Uh, always, I always want to accomplish more. I'm not going to be satisfied until we have an undefeated season or at least till we win a championship. So, uh, but the season went probably as good as it could be expected considering where we were coming from. Um, talk about, you know, when you look at you guys coming, um, Coming back, you got your quarterback, Kanye Donaldson, coming back. Um, you know, obviously he's going to be a senior. So talk about how the development of Kanye has been for you guys um, and what impact has he brought for you guys? Well, Kanye, is, he's not only developing as a player, but he's developing more as a leader. Um, I don't know if it's the, the realization that this is his last season, but his leadership has has stepped up leaps and bounds. I think he has a, a more comfortable, he's more comfortable with me as a head coach and understanding what I want uh, and, and what I expect out of him. And he's stepped up to the plate on that. So he's he's looking really, really good. He's been in the weight room as as has of the other guys. They've been in the weight room. Um, I will say uh, we have a brand new weight room. Uh, and I'm thankful for that. And these guys have been utilizing it. So, uh, and none more than Kanye. Kanye is, I'm looking for a big season for him, from him. Talk about some other impactful players. I mean, like, obviously that can make some noise for you guys. Um, when you mm -hmm. look at Pontiac, people look at Pontiac and, you know, it's like, you know what I mean? Like, um, but talk about some imp other impact players besides Kanye um, that can make some noise yeah. this season. Yeah, well, so we have two brothers that I'm looking forward to uh, filling one of the vacancies we had at receiver. Uh, we're losing um, Devin Johnson. But we have Fahim and Famarze Jeffrey. Mm -hmm. uh, they both have been working very, very hard. They've been in the weight room. Uh, Fahim is, is skinny, mm -hmm. <laughs> but he's been working. Uh, he's got, got a lot of speed. And they've their hands have improved, and, and they've just been putting in work. So I'm looking forward to, to Kanye utilizing both of them uh, this season. And we have uh, Terrell Chapman, who he's going to be a junior and honestly, I believe that he's a D1 prospect. Uh, he plays uh, offensive tackle and also defensive tackle for us. He's a big guy who's been in the weight room. He's got great feet, but just his aggressiveness has, you know, I think he's just grown into who he really is, and he's become more and more aggressive. And so I'm really looking forward to seeing him uh, out there. And then you have Bryce Brown and, and Dallas Coleman. Um both of them have been staples on the offensive and defensive line since, well, on the offensive line since the uh, since they've been freshmen. So they're both to be juniors as well. Uh, we're transitioning Bryce to more of a linebacker role. Uh, he's been a great center for us. Uh, so we we want to try to move him off that center spot and uh, and fill somebody else in there and let him 
I really shine at the linebacker spot. Um, talk about your um, defensive backs. I mean, obviously, you look at Pontiac. Um, program strength has been one of the um, biggest concerns I've had with Pontiac. Um, how's the numbers been mm-hmm. doing over at Pontiac? Well, the numbers have been they've been okay. They've been, for everything being relative, the numbers have been decent for as opposed to last year. However, they're not where you want them to be. Mm-hmm. Um, but but as far as last year, we have more that's uh, working out now. Uh, the off-season program that, that we have going, we have more kids involved with that. Uh, we have uh, quite a few of the basketball players have, have joined on to the football team. So you know the type of athletes that basketball players usually are. So we're looking forward to them out there. But as always, you know, I would love to have 50, 60 uh, mm-hmm. players out there right now, but we're more so like 25 to 30, which is more than what we had last year at this time. Mm-hmm. Talk about that relationship with Coach Andrew Myers, the boys' basketball coach at Pontiac. Um, obviously seeing the players there. Um, you know, what does, what's the success that, of, of Coach Myers, uh, the success he's had at Pontiac done with you guys? Well, you know, Coach Myers and myself, we work hand in hand. So we both promote uh, the, each other's program. Uh, and encourage the kids to play multiple sports. Uh, and and we just, we work really good together. Coach puts in a lot of work. He's the hardest working coach I've been around. Mm-hmm. And, and he continues to work. So the kids are, are, are blessed or, or they, they, they're, they should be proud to have him as their coach, the amount of work that he puts in uh, with these young men. And so I, I, I think highly of him. I look forward to him being really successful. Um, I believe they achieved some things that hadn't been achieved before. Uh, this past season, and I just look forward to get better from here. And when you look at and when you look at um your schedule coming up, I mean, like you open up the year with Detroit Douglas Week One, Frederick Douglas Week One. That's a really interesting matchup. Um, mm-hmm. Talk about your schedule a little bit, your non-conference first, and then we'll get into the um league part of the schedule. So talk about how that um how the um conference schedule's been going for you guys. Well, I mean, I, if you ask me, we have a pretty tough schedule. Mm-hmm. Um, it seems like everyone we have uh, is a quality program uh, that's been successful. So, um, honestly, I believe we have a tougher schedule this year than we did last year. Uh, so, I'm looking forward to to see how we respond to that challenge, uh, to see where we are. Uh, we definitely end the season uh, uh, with a big game against uh, Harper Woods. Yeah, it's uh, not so, going to be an easy game. I'll tell you that much. It's no, not going to be not. easy. <laughs> it's not. But, you know, if we do everything we're supposed to do, then we'll have a chance in that game. So I just I just do I operate. I take it one game at a time, one day at a time, um, and, and we move from there. So I, my biggest focus is to get these young men, uh, these student athletes, excuse me, to um, understand the work that it takes to be successful, that it's an everyday thing. Mm-hmm. Don't get ahead of yourself. Uh, just put the work in today mm-hmm. and live with the results tomorrow. And when you look at the division you're in, you're in the gold division. Um, you got mm-hmm. Avondale, you got Royal Oak, Berkeley um, are in there. Um, Avondale, Royal Oak, Berkeley, and Ferndale. Um, talk about, you know, I mean, what your thoughts are of all those other teams in your division. You know, you're going up against, um, you know, competing against them in the division. Well, yeah, they established programs, and they've been successful. Uh, each and every one of them, I, I want us to uh, actually get to the level they've been at, uh, su- sustain uh, success. Uh, and, and you know, I when you look from afar at all those programs, they ran well. Uh, and, you know, you want to be at that level. So that's where – that's that's the goal for us is to get to a level where we're uh, competing with them uh, every game, every year. And, and so right now I think we're on, on a pretty good track. And when you look at, of course, we, um, obviously, is there any, um, newcomers that you want to, I mean, like want to mention OA nation to, um, for OA nation to know about when it comes to Pontiac? Well, no, you know, I can't, I really don't have any newcomers to, to mention because we haven't put uh, any pads or anything like that. So, you know, a guy can look great in shorts, but it's what you do once the pads come on. So I, I, re- I much rather highlight the guys who um, were there last year that are returning, uh, that I've seen put in the work. Uh, I have, I know where their their um, 
what level they were at, and I and I can gauge where they're going to be. And those players that I name are going to be significantly better than they were last year. So. And when you look at when you look at when you look at you guys, I mean, like obviously, you know, you look at the background you've come from. You you've been in the NFL. You've been the um. You've been in. You've been. You put, you've seen a lot of football. You know what I mean. So, what do you think it's yes. going to take for Pontiac? You know what I mean to take that next step in your eyes. It's going to take consistency. Consistency of uh, doing things the right way. Um, we have to. We have to build the program. Uh, so we can't. There's no shortcuts to it. And we have to. Uh, if we really want to be where we're going to be, we have to get more parent involvement, more uh, of the community involved. Uh, but we also have to give them something to be involved with. So we really have to do a great job of adding value uh, to these young men and women uh, and student athletes that are out there and for the community to see, for the parents to, to understand what this really is. So um, as we know, you know, there's the elephant in the room that we lose most of our, a lot of our good players to other programs. And so the, the number one thing is the first is to keep our players here, keep our players in Pontiac and then we build uh, with them. And so I, I believe that if we really, if we, if you took the players that are attending other schools for whatever reason, and I'm not saying that, that there's anything underhanded going on, uh, but for whatever reason, if you take those kids and you put them in the Pontiac uh, program, uh, we're talking about a whole different program at this point. And I wonder if, like, you know, obviously with this group, you know, knowing the history of Pontiac, I mean, like, you know, you have, you had Pontiac Northern, Pontiac Central. Um, obviously, mm-hmm. have you have you ever shared the history of both both schools with with your kids? Yeah, you know, it's funny because that's one of the things that our coaching staff is always talking about uh, the rivalry and and how sports were, uh, as we say, back in the day, mm-hmm. and you know. Half the time, these kids look at you like, you know, you know, you're just an old man. Who knows? <laughs> so, you know, every chance I get, I try to bring uh, someone who they may know from from those times to talk about the rivalries, to talk about the pride that we had um, being a Husky or being a Chief, and, and how that pride translates to being uh, a Phoenix. And when you look at and when you look at Pontiac, I mean, like obviously, you know, you look at you look at the success that Pontiac's had, particularly in basketball, and I know it's, and I know trying to get it in the football. Um, you know, so when you look at it here, that's like the perfect motivational factor. You know, seeing from basketball and the football. Um, when you look at, when you look at it, when you look at this team coming up this year, um, what are your, what's your expectations heading in for this Pontiac team? I mean, where do you see this Pontiac team going? this season well it's like i said the schedule's tougher um i'm i'm seeing what i see for the team i see the team being better than it was last year mm-hmm. now whether that translates into more wins or not i'm not sure but i i see us being a better team a more knowledgeable team um harder working team um ideally i would love to at least double the win total Mm -hmm. Um, but we're in a very tough conference. So I can't really talk about the wins and losses. It's just about the process. And I, and I just want us to be, um, to take that next step. And and I'm sure I'm, I'm really, I'm really sure that we're going to be better than we were last year. And when when you look at the, um, when you look at that process, you know, you said it best. I mean, Rome's not built overnight. You know what I mean? You're just, it's building the program, building the, um, building confidence with these young men and uh, young men, you know, building the confidence. And, you know, obviously, you know, one thing I've always been like a um, big fan of is uniforms. I mean, like obviously with Pontiac, you know, I've always loved teams that were purple. You know what I mean? Purple is a great color. Mm-hmm. And what is your, um, I mean, like obviously you guys have made some changes to uniforms, you know what I mean? You've got more of a black as well at times. Um, Talk about, you know what I mean? Talk about your uniform. Your uniform. I mean, like, just how how is it? Well, you know, I'm not a big uniform guy. Uh, I'm kind of old school. Mm-hmm. Coach, just give me whatever you got, and I'll play. 
But I also know that and one of the things the coach told me, if you if you look good, you feel good. If you feel good, you play good. Mm-hmm. So that's the kind of the, the I kind of go by that thing and, and try to make sure that at least these, these kids feel good about what they're wearing. Mm-hmm. Just to take that out of, uh, you know, take that out of their mind. Like, oh, I, I don't like how these uniforms are. So they have some say in what we wear mm-hmm. uh, because they have to wear it. Mm-hmm. And so we just, you know, we try to do something that, 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 that they'll feel comfortable and feel good about. Mm-hmm. You know, every, every instance you have to feel good about something, uh, the better you'll be. And when you look at, and we look at you guys, obviously the, you guys have had the new field, um, a couple of years ago mm-hmm. it was put in, um, talk about, you know what I mean? Like the impact of the, of the new field and the impact of what the, of the community. You know, <laughs> I'll tell you what, that field has been, uh, it feels amazing. Mm-hmm. And every time that someone sees the field for the first time, they're kind of awestruck. And so that's, I think that the school board did a great job and, and uh, with the facilities, period. You know, they put money into the facilities and that goes along with that. If you look good, you feel good. I'm not, that's not why they did it. I mean, it's time for an update, but um, I love our facilities and everyone who's seen them for the first time. I don't know if they expected something less, but they're always awestruck by how well, how good everything looks out there. And I've seen that field, and it's really beautiful. I mean, like, I really, yeah. you know, I went there last year because um, I, I am a track coach. Um, but I went there last year, and I said to myself, wow, you know, that is everything that field, that was incredible. Just incredible, yeah. incredible, incredible. Um, before I let you go, Coach, um, um, what is your expectations this year? Um, I did ask Coach Odin um, his thought process on the um, Detroit mm-hmm. Lions last year. I wanted to know what was your thought process with the Lions, um, you know, winning the North for the first time, getting the playoffs. What was your thought process? Well, I mean, it, it was it's something that you would love to emulate. Mm-hmm. Uh, they, they, they're a team. They have an identity. They stick to their identity. Uh, and they work together very, very well. You can tell that everyone in that program is on one accord. Mm-hmm. And being a coach, that's all I want. You know, that's all you dream of is being on one accord like that. From the foundation all the way, you know, to the top, they're all in one accord. So I, uh, you know, I'm, I'm happy to, to be able to see an organization like that, you know, during my lifetime. And it gives me something to shoot for with, with our guys. And when you look at and when you look at that ammunition success, I mean, especially because it was a couple years ago that the Lions, um, it was before you took over, um, donated some helmets to the Pontiac Phoenix. And, um, yes. you know, mm-hmm. and obviously, you know, you look at the success they've had and now, you know, it's really impacted, you know what I mean? the entire state and the entire community with the success of the lions. Right. Um, you know, and I, and I see that and I see that with you guys, you know what I mean? Like the, um, you know, you guys are, are an up and coming team getting better each day, taking it one day at a time. Um, so my final question to you is what is your expectations heading into the season for you guys? Well, I, 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 as I say all the time, I expect us to compete. I expect us to give our best. I expect us to make the city of Pontiac proud with how we go about our day-to-day activities, how we work uh, on the field, how we work off the field, from our grades uh, to our success or our performance on the field. All those things are something that, that we want to be successful at and um, just make our school, our city, uh, our families proud of the work that we're putting in. I'll let the results, you know, be what they will be. But I know that the winning formula is if you take care of all that stuff, then the results will be there. Mm-hmm. Um, it one, goes without fail. One more question. Um, do you have, like, a theme or a model this year for you guys? You know what I mean? Like a theme this year for you guys? No, not yet. Not yet. I, I am working on that. I've, I've had a few go through my head. Um, but we don't have our theme uh, narrowed down just yet. Good. Um, but what we do, I'll let you know. Ooh, okay. Um, thank you really much for <laughs> thank you really much for joining me this week here, Pontiac Coach Wendell Jefferson here, joining us on the podcast this week. Um, thank you for joining us this week. 
Thank you, Sammy. It was a pleasure. And I will see you at Media Day um, coming up yes, really sir. soon. So be looking forward yes, to that. Sir. So we'll see what All happens. Right. All right. Um, All right, thank thank you. you real much. Um, You're welcome. Okay. Um, okay. Well, when we come back, we're going to talk to um, North Farmington coach John Herstein here on the podcast. Um, here on the um, podcast. Welcome back to OA Now here. I'm Sammy Termina here. We got the coach of the Raiders, Coach John Herstein here. I'm Coach. Um, thank you for joining us this week on the podcast. Thanks, Sammy. I appreciate you having us on. Um, when you look at you guys last, when you look at you guys, it's been like the last three years has not been really, it's been on, it's been on Raider like. I mean, like, so talk about, you know, obviously last season and then, you know, with the, um, with what's been going on with North Farmington. Yeah, well, you know, over the through the pandemic, and I know a lot of other teams, they kind of experienced a little downturn in the number of kids, and we, we had a little bit of that, but I think uh, our numbers are trending, trending back in the right direction, so that's exciting. we got a, a good group of uh, juniors, or seem to be seniors now, I should say, seniors that have played varsity football uh, off and on for the uh, last two, two seasons, so... Um, uh, you know, we really think pretty highly of them and are excited to see what what they're able to do. Uh, when you look at last year, you had a quarterback in Ryan Shelby. Um, he had a really, he had a nice year last year. So talk about how's your quarterback situation looking like for you guys? Well, obviously losing Ryan was a big loss. You know, he's a couple years starter. You know, wasn't able to play two seasons ago because of a, a torn ACL. So uh, that hurt us. But, um, but uh, we we think pretty highly of the kid we've got right now, and Terrence James. He's a junior. He's a phenomenal athlete. Uh, can throw it really well. Not necessarily a um, uh, a quarterback. Uh, you know, when you think about his potential in college, college and things like that, he's got a couple of MAC offers and more of an athlete. But uh, uh, look, probably a little bit more of a receiver, defensive back. But uh, from an athletic standpoint and kind of a, a football football ability he's really got it so uh we're excited to see him get out there and you know command the offense and uh you know can throw the ball very well has a strong arm and and can also run it so see him make some uh probably make some pretty good plays out there talk about when you look at north farmington you have a very good proven player coming back in brendan rice um how has brendan been doing this off season He's been doing really good. You know, he's uh, trimmed up a little bit, so that's good. Uh, still working on getting into uh, the shape he wants to be in to play both ways and really uh, be dominant on both offensive and defensive line. But I'm confident he'll get there. Um, uh, yeah, he's been a good leader for us, working hard in the weight room. You know, super excited for him. Had, you know, been out to a lot of different colleges, had probably 50, 60 colleges come through this off season to take a look at him and some of the other guys. And, uh, and, and, uh, you know, I think, I think that's kept him motivated and, and uh, eager to get ready for the season. I know he's looking at trying to commit soon. He, he's really excited to just buckle down and put, put all that stuff, you know, to the side and just focus on having a great senior year with his buddies. Talk about any other impact players that you have um, uh, that should, OA Nation needs to keep an eye on for you guys this season. Yeah, definitely. So I kind of already mentioned, um, uh, 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 you know, Terrence. You know, again, two way player for us. Possibly play some defensive back. Also, a really good return man, uh, and he'll only be a, be a junior. He's one of the guys that played for us a lot on varsity this past season. Uh, we also have a kid named Lawrence Woodley coming back. He's off the basketball team. Um, you know, really great athlete, good receiver, played some defensive back, terrific kick returner. Um, you know, just able uh, to, to really make a difference there. So that, that's another exciting, exciting thing to, to look for. Um, Duke Blanche, uh, he'll be a three-year starter for us. He's a running back. Um uh, defensive back, you know, really tough kid comes up for its tackles really well. Uh, probably has some of the, the most football savvy on the team. Um, and, uh, also really good receiver out of the backfield. And also when you put him in the slot, mm -hmm. uh, the other kid is TJ Alexander. He'll another senior, uh, plays slot receiver and also plays defensive back, uh, ha has a really good mind for the secondary and, uh, you know, really looking forward to him, uh, keep contributing there. 
We have a couple of linebackers that I'm excited about on the defensive side of the ball to go along with Brendan. Dominic Washington, uh, long, strong, really terrific worker, uh, you know, has good speed, really good high school football player, also plays tight end for us. Um, and then Trey Thomas, who's another two-year starter um, for us and uh, and is a really good, um, you know, fullback, running back type, actually. And then also plays linebacker. And the last kid is, uh, the last couple kids are Justin Cross. Uh, he was injured last year, wasn't able to play with uh, – Pulled the same thing at the beginning and just never quite got right. He played a little bit at the end. Um, but we think he can be a really big difference maker. And then Jameer Renty, who's actually only going to be a sophomore, but we're excited to see what he can do. He's got a big frame. Uh, as part of the four by four by two state qualifying uh, back and field team. So he has good speed and, uh, you know, just kind of see what he's able to do. Um, when you look at you, when you look at the, um, North Farmington, of course, a lot of people look at the Raiders and they've been known for pretty for um for proven linemen. I mean, like when you look at North Farmington, um, any impactful lineman lineman that can make some noise for you guys? Yeah, definitely. You think that could be a really good part of our team? We got a number of kids that have been playing there for multiple years. We're also really excited about a couple of incoming kids uh, and and young kids. Uh, obviously, Brendan would be one of them on the offensive and defensive line. A uh, kid named Michael Reddick will be a three-year varsity football player. Um, really could have a great season. He's big. He's strong. You know, I think if he really goes all in, which he seems to be, he'd have an excellent season. Leland Petway uh, on the offensive line, very smart kid, uh, tough, real tough, and uh, can, can play a lot of the positions there. Um, A.J. Wilson is uh, a kid to kind of look out for. He's got great athleticism and size. Uh, he, he was a terrific re- wrestler. I think he had 30-plus wins this past season as a wrestler, and he's one of our best uh, gotten disc kids, you know, throwing it, you know, 150 feet in the discus and 40-plus, you know, 45-plus in the drop put near 50 feet. So he's got a lot of a lot of those skills um, but to look out for. And then a couple young kids to look out for would be uh, uh, Gabe Jankowski will be a sophomore. We think he could possibly start for us on the offensive line this year. And we have an incoming freshman named Elijah um, Moore, who's really good. Again, multiple sport athlete, you know, uh, gotten this kid, but uh, from a football standpoint, he's a, I think he's going to make a really good offensive and defensive lineman, possibly uh, a guard and then play, you know, defensive tackle, maybe defensive end. And then when you look at, of course, um, the division you're in, the schedule. Um, let's talk that. I mean, obviously, the division you're in, you you're in the blue. There's a lot more teams in that division. Um, talk about the division. I mean, like ob- before, um, and then we'll talk about like um, there's one te- game I want to get particularly your thoughts on, and that's the Farmington Cup. Um, we'll get to that. Um, talk about your division. Um, obviously the um. You know, let's talk about the teams in this one. This division looks really wide open in your eyes when you look at it. Yeah, you know, so, you know, when you start looking at the divisional play, you know, we got Ferndale. It's actually a team that we're going to cross over who's in the gold. Yeah, it's going to be an interesting game. Strong, yeah, if you think they're a strong team um, that, that you know, the coach does a great job. They've had a couple kids transfer uh, – in and down from from some other good football areas to play in the OA, and uh, you know I I, I think they're going to be a, a tough team. They got tough kids. They're well coached. Um, I think it'll be a great matchup. Um, to be honest, they're a team that could play up in our division and probably have some success. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, when you start looking at our division uh, with you know next will be Bloomfield Hills. Um, you know, team that we lost to in triple overtime last year, and you know, had we beaten them, we we were, would have been in the playoff. The mm-hmm. first team out in Division Two by yeah. like a quarter of a point. Uh, but you know, we had our opportunity, didn't get the job done, and uh, you know, looking forward to getting back and playing them. The well coached again. You know, uh, Dan up there does a great job. He's got great assistants. Um, you know that they'll be ready, and uh, we'll be excited to play football. Um, Troy Athens, you know, I think Troy Athens is a team that is uh, has kind of on the rise. Their coach is second year coach, 
came on over, uh, kind of transformed the offense midseason a little bit, running the straight T. But you could tell as they did it each week, they got better. Um, got some big kids there to come off the ball in the offensive line and at tight end and even in the backfield. Uh, I'd anticipate them uh, probably executing that offense very well this next year. And if they're able to do that, uh, it, it, it could be an equalizer and, and give them an opportunity to upset a lot of teams. Oak Park, um, we played them for many years when we were in the white with them and, uh, and you know, crossed over with them and so on. I have all the respect in the world for Coach Carter and his son, Adam. Uh, great coaches um, do, do a fantastic job preparing their teams. Uh, they got probably some of the most talented kids coming back and their two tailbacks among uh, uh, a couple of linemen and things like that. So I'd imagine they, they'd be one of the top teams to, to beat, as you say, their red letter game. Um, uh, after, after Adams is, uh, is uh, Birmingham uh, see home. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, you know, I know they've graduated a lot the last couple of years, but with that being said, uh, you know, their coaches have done a great job with their offense it really isn't the veer. An equalizer. Yep. The veer. Yeah. yeah the, the veer option that they run is an equalizer. They, they, uh, mm -hmm. they, they run it great. The kids fire off the ball. You can tell they believe in it. They, they just, you can see the joy they have for the game and the way that they play. And that's, you know, a compliment to their coaches. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and that's, a, that's a game we're really looking forward to. And their defense is something it's a little bit unique. A lot of colleges are running that that, uh, that crunch defense, you know, that 6-1 crunch, whatever you yeah, want to call one it. 6-1 crunch, uh, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. So they uh, they run that, and they do a nice job of it. And they've had some kids that can come downhill and fill, and and, uh, and they, force you, they force you to be effective uh, in some, on some tough plays. And so, uh, you know, it'll be, be, it'll be a good game. Uh, we we cross out, we cross up with the with the red and we play Rochester Adams. Um, another take, beer team. Uh, another beer team, exactly. Although those those two beers are slightly different. Um, you know, I think Coach Petrito up there might be one of the best coaches in the state. Got all the respect in the world for him. Kids play hard. They execute hard. They they run to the football on defense. Uh, uh, a couple years ago, we played them and lost in overtime in a really tight game, and uh, and you know we just really looking forward to that one uh, to the challenge to playing the team of their caliber. Uh, I know they've got a quarterback coming back who can throw the ball really well. Yeah, Brian um, Waters, yep. So that makes yep that that adds an extra layer of uh, of dimension to their team, which going all the way back when they had some of their other guys, you know. Alan Guy and things like that. They oh, also have some other guys. Well. That throw, <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, that could throw the ball good. So, uh, you know, you know, you, you know that they know how to do that when they got the guys, and when they, you know, when they need to run the option, they can coach that to, to perfection also. So it'll be a uh, it'll be a tough game, but we're we're excited for it. Get to go up to, to Rochester Adams and play them, and then week nines against Troy, um, uh, one of the biggest schools in the state. Uh, we've beaten them the last couple of years, all they've been tight games. I know they've got, they, they graduated some linemen, but what I've, what I've heard is that they've got a, a really great quarterback and a couple of receivers that can throw it and run and go get it. So I'd imagine they'll be ready. Coach Frazier does a nice job there. You know, he's an offensive line coach by trade. So I know they'll get, you know, the offensive line ready and prepared and he'll have that offense dialed up. And then I, I didn't mention our, our first game, but, our first game is against Livonia Stevenson. Um, it's uh, that's who we get to open up with. We get to open up at home, which is exciting for us. One of our four home games this year, uh, and and you know Stevenson, we we think uh, will be a nice challenge. A team that is uh, that is um, that that is uh, good within their division. I think they're real close to making the tournament last year, and. Uh, and that is, you know, a nice team to open up with, you know, local Steve nearby. Livonia Stevenson really struggled a little bit last year. I remember that because they played Lake Orion, um, and they were just, you know, shellacked in yeah, that game. I mean, you know, a lot of teams struggle against Orion last year too, though. That is true. <laughs> well, I, I think I think they ended up going four and five. I want to say, and they were out of the tournament. 
they got a couple. I know they got a big offensive line. Looks like they got a good athlete at quarterback, just from you know, kind of seeing stuff online. Uh, right. So I'll take a look. <laughs> yeah, and, you know. I'll yeah, we'll we'll mm-hmm. yeah we'll we'll see how we'll see how that game turns out. But I, I think it'll be good. They run exotic defense a, a little bit in the three three stack, and they uh, will load up the box and have guys blitz in and coming all over the place. So week one, you know, that could be a uh, big, really tough game, but a game that we're we're excited to be part of. And now this is one of the things I really want to talk to you about is the return of the Farmington Cup. I mean, I know it still haunts you after two years ago losing that game in overtime. Um, So talk about playing Farmington again um, this season, this the impact of that game, the community aspect, and you got them coming to Ron Holland Field this year. Yeah, that's exciting. Uh, Obviously, we're we're devastated not having the opportunity to play them. You know, one of the first times ever in the school's history that that the two schools have not played. Um, It's too bad that it couldn't be worked out from the league and from everybody else. But we're excited to have have that game back on the schedule, play for the Little Brown Jug, um, Mm -hmm. which is – uh, which is which is kind of cool, you know, with all the games written down on it. And uh, you know, we're we're obviously crosstown rival. It'll be a big game for us. It'll be a game that we're all excited for. Uh, they, I know, they graduated one of their best players in this kid, Cam Petway, who's going to Bowling Green. Um, but I also know they had a huge lower level class last year, and uh, and 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 so you know that they're going to be ready to go and have some some nice depth and kids to. Uh, come out coach albrecht is uh you know a long time varsity coach and you know he'll, he'll get the team prepared i remember watching the games on fire tv 10 and they are intense i mean like i mean like you guys i mean like you guys against um against farmington i remember um you know watching the 19 game was a classic the um yeah. last year i mean like two years ago that game ended up going double overtime you know what I was really happy with is from last year is you guys finally changed helmets. You guys finally got out of those white helmets and went to the went to the gold helmets. I really enjoyed that. Um, so, yeah, me, me too. I yeah, mean, it was, we, we got we got a new AD who got behind that and understood the the history behind the the gold helmet, and uh, so we appreciate uh, uh, their support in helping us make that happen. It made me really happy for you guys to do that because, like, um, because I'm going like, you know, when I'm watching you guys play, it's like uh, when I'm watching you guys in farms and play, seeing two teams wearing white helmets, going like, wait a minute here, what's going on here? I mean, like, I'm going like, what's going on? You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, that was one of the first things I wanted to do when we came over here uh, from Harrison. I, I wanted to have the gold helmet re- reinstore that back into North Farmington because when I thought of North Farmington from the you know, 70s and 80s and 90s and, you know, early 2000s. It was always, always a, that gold helmet. And then uh, somewhere along the way, it got changed and, and the athletic director was uh, pretty adamant about us staying with it. And then obviously a change in guard and a little bit more, uh, a little more open-minded to that. And uh, we were able to get that done. Talk about the relationship with Coach Negotian over at North. I mean, like obviously the boys basketball program over there, How's that relationship been between you guys, you and, and Coach Negotian? It's been good. You know, we do all the, the training for those guys as far as weight training and conditioning. Uh, we welcome anybody, you know, anybody really within the school to, to come out and train. So he has uh, all the players come out. We, we could get more of those guys to come out and play some football. But you know how it is in this day and age with the kids that uh, – with the single sport athletes and things of that nature, but we were super excited for, for him and, uh, and the team to make it to the state finals. Very proud of them. Uh, he works so hard as a, as a basketball coach and really as an ambassador to the school. He, he, he really, he cares tremendously about the Raiders. Um, Toddy, Toddy puts in a ton of extra work for the school uh, so you couldn't see, you know, you could, couldn't be more happy for them to, to have that game. You wish they would have been able to win, although, and against, you know, one of the best teams, uh, if not in the Midwest and the eighth win. And, and they gave them, gave them some, gave them all they could handle for a long time. It was a, it was a pretty tight game. They battled really hard. 
Uh, so we're very, very proud of those guys and very happy for him. And then, you know, a plug, a shout out to his father, uh, Tom Negotian. He's been, uh, he's being inducted into the BCAM hall of fame this fall. So, uh, you know, obviously the success they've had here at North Farmington, uh, in the basketball realm has been, has been, uh, phenomenal and, uh, and a pillar of the community. Um, all right. Yeah. Before I let you go, before I let you go, coach, um, what is your expectations to your coach? Let's expect the guys to compete hard. I think we got a great schedule um, against a lot of really good teams that, you know, games could go a lot of different ways, but I want our guys to compete to the end, play to the end, uh, finish games strong. Um, I thought we did, you know, I thought kids played harder last year and that was exciting. I expect us to build upon that and, uh, and, and come out and compete. Um, just excited for the season. North Farms and Coach John Herstein here. Thank you for joining us this week here on the podcast. Uh, wish you guys the best of luck, and I will see you at Media Day. Sounds good. Thanks, Sammy. Have take a good care. one. Take care. Yep. Okay, now we're going to take a break here. We're going to talk to Stony Creek Coach Rick Powell here on the podcast. Welcome back to OA Now here. I'm Sammy Termina here. Um, we got the new coach of the Cougars, Coach Rick Powell here. Coach, um, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. appreciate you having me on. Um, of course, last season, of course, you were the defensive coordinator at Lake Orion. Um, defense last year, very, very good. Um, what made the decision for you to leave Lake Orion and go to Stony Creek um, this offseason? Um, you, know, you know, first and foremost, Lake Orion is a great place with a lot of great people. Um, worked with a lot of great staff members, uh, not only in the building, but also on the football field. Um, you know, I was, just, I was just looking for an opportunity to, to kind of run my own program and be a head coach. and. You know, this opportunity came up right in my backyard where uh, I grew up in Rochester and thought it was a good opportunity to pursue, uh, especially for me and my family. So, um, you know, kind of just having a fall on my lap. And it was a difficult decision, obviously, leaving Lake Orion. Uh, but I was ready to start a new chapter of my uh, coaching career. Um, Talk about, you know, the um, – talk about Stony Creek. I mean, obviously, you look at um, last season, they went – uh, they struggled. They went three and six, um, going down from the red to the white. So you do have some experience – seeing this team so what was your first initial thought process when you saw when you saw your new your new your new team uh yeah no i'm excited you know i'm just excited to, to work with these guys and uh, you know see what we can put together and see what we can start uh you know everything in the past is in the past and that's all um you know whatever's happened you know there's been a lot of ups and downs with this with the program in the past and you know we're trying to look to be consistent that's our whole goal this off season and into the future seasons but just being consistent with everything we do um, they put our best foot forward and really trying to make a run of things uh, as we put it all together. When you, know, you got look, a lot of great, go ahead. When you look at your when you look at the your players, obviously you do have a very good shot put discus score and Spencer Beekman, Peyton Rumbler. Um, your your line, your know, your offense and defensive line looks really good um, coming in. So how how's it been the um, development of those three guys been for you guys? Yeah, so we have uh, – I feel like, you know, Stony Creek's always had a lot of big guys, uh, and the offensive defensive line has always been the, the main points of emphasis, um, you know, on the program and the team. And, uh, yeah, I mean, we got a guy anchoring everything. Uh, Spencer Beckman um, will be a huge, huge, huge catalyst for us on the offensive and defensive line. Uh, and then he's got some other young guys that we're trying to really uh, bring up with them with Brody Rumler. Um, another senior is Noah Gochai. Uh, we have a lot, a, lot of good, a lot of good pieces on the offensive and defensive line uh, that we're looking, looking forward to. You know, not only, not only run behind, but also cause some havoc on the defensive line. But we also got a lot of other quick little guys that uh, can do some things differently up front for us that, that you know, like to move them around a little bit and um, create some havoc for the offense in different ways as well. Any impact players? I mean, obviously, when I look at you guys, there's some questions at quarterbacks, running back, playmaker. I mean, like proven playmakers. Um, How, I mean, like any any – any players that for the OA Nation to know about, you know, like you know, they they lost uh, they lost a lot of guys um, last season, a lot of senior graduations, um, really heavy senior class last year. Uh, so really, it's an opportunity for new guys to kind of step into new roles, uh, figure out where they best fit. Uh, you know, I know they got uh, Sam Fogler we got coming back. He's a good uh, secondary guy, outside linebacker. He'll be running back, kind of do it do it all for us. Um, and then there's a lot of other pieces. You know, there's some young bucks that are stepping up. Uh, whether they be 10th graders, 11th graders, um, and even some seniors. So um, it's just a good opportunity for those guys to really try to make a name for themselves uh, starting fresh, not only with a new scheme, a new staff, but uh, with a new season. You know, they have their own chance to, to make their own paths. 
So huh? we're really looking looking forward to it and excited to see uh, those guys develop over the course of the year. How's your quarterback situation looking? Obviously, you know what I mean, you guys. I know um, I know it's a new staff, new new program. How's your quarterback situation looking? Uh, yeah, you know, we have a good quarterback room right now. we got about three guys that are battling for the job, um, two juniors and a, and a sophomore. And, uh, you know, those guys are doing a really good job of, of putting forth a lot of extra work and doing what they need to do to, to be successful this offseason. But, uh, you know, each one of them bring a different – a different style of play, um, you know, that, that can be utilized in many different ways. So it's all about, you know, what we, what we develop and what we figure out uh, best scheme that fits for the guy that wins the job and who takes leadership and ownership. Cause that's what really what we're trying to trying to teach those guys right now is to, to really take ownership of the team. And then um, from there, utilize their skill sets um, to the best of the ability of the team. Um, talk about your schedule. I mean, obviously you do have your city rivals in there. You got Adams and Stony in Rochester, um, what is your first initial thought process of seeing those two teams being in district, um, having to deal with them this season, both Adams and Rochester? Yeah. So, I mean, you mentioned it earlier, like one of, one of the moves also was uh, why I was fortunate enough to take this job at, uh, Stony Creek is just playing that way. You know, no matter if you're in the red, the white, uh, blue, it doesn't matter what the league you're in. Uh, it's tough week in, week out. It's a battle. And, uh, I mean, that's one of the things that kind of drew me to this to this opportunity. And, um, you know, like I said, we, we went down from the red to the white, as you mentioned, but, um, uh, you know, there's, we're still playing two defending state champions in Southfield and Harper woods. Uh, we still cross over with Lake Orion cross over with, um, uh, you mentioned it, uh, Adams. Adams, sorry. Yeah. Rochester Adams. Um, so, you know, those are big, big games for us. And then obviously you got the, the rest of the gauntlet Groves will be very solid. Um, everybody else in the white will be very, very, very good competition. Um, and then obviously, you know, the, the rival games, as you mentioned, I think, I think the biggest thing for us is to figure out that, yeah, they're rivals and they're crosstown showdowns and, you know, obviously want to win those games, but there's a lot of, there's a lot of games to be played. Um, and our, and our goal is to, to focus on each game one at a time, obviously put our best foot forward, try to make a run to the playoffs. Um, and, and doing so, obviously we need, we need to focus on those rivalry games, but we don't want to make the moment too big or too small, um, when going into any one of these games. You open up with, um, your um, alum honor school, Warren Cousineau to open up the year. So how did that come up? Yeah, that'll be fun. Um, you know, and honestly, it's a pretty, pretty crazy situation. When I, when I first got the job, uh, all the schedule was set. So none of this had any, I had any control over any of this, uh, the schedule was already set for us. So, you know, week one, obviously going to Cousineau, as you mentioned, and week two, get a homecoming against Lake Orion. So it's kind of, kind of cool to get those back to back games, start the season. Um, you know, but we're really excited to go back to go back home, go back to Cousineau. Um, you know, I, I haven't really been back or played there since I actually played there. Um, I know their defensive coordinator was actually one of my, was my defensive coordinator when I played Brad Nettles. So, um, uh, he's kind of came back on staff the last few years. So they, they, they do a great job over there and, um, we're looking forward to that opportunity to kind of go back home and, and be part of it. Obviously talk about, um, you know, the, the theme this year, I noticed on Twitter, you said the word elite on um, Twitter. So that your guys' new theme this year. So talk about what that is. Yeah, we just try to make sure we, we are make you know our, our main goal is to create an elite, you know, mindset and everything that we do. Um, our, our theme, elite, uh, has five core principles, five five values that we that we focus on, and E is excellence, and we're just trying to strive for excellence in everything we do. Um, you know, we 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 don't want our guys, or we want our guys to be perfect, but you know, unfortunately, a lot of times that the strive for perfection creates a really unhealthy habit that guys don't always reach to. So we want to strive for excellence in everything that we do. Um, our L is for love. That's our pillar that, you know, we want to, we want to set a standard to, to love tough um, and really, really focus on that. Um, I is for integrity, obviously doing the right things, making above the line choices, things that I learned from Coach Blackstock um, at Lake Orion. Um, our T is toughness, and that goes with mental and physical toughness and everything we do. And our uh, last E is energy, and that's just bring a ton of energy, having fun doing what we do. So, yeah, we say elite, we talk about it all the time, but really it's, it's uh, five core principles that make up that a word. Uh, that we really try to strive for each and every day. Now, one question that I've real, always wondered here is the uniform combination. Um, Stony Creek's been known for their uniforms. Um, you guys making any changes to the uniforms I'm heading into the year? Um, I mean, I've been thinking about maybe that helmet, you know what I mean? That helmet, you know what I mean? Like um, maybe getting rid of that SC, maybe put a Cougar on there. Um, yeah, uh, there's some there's some big changes coming for that. Uh, I might have to wait till week one to, to see what that what, what's entail. Um, You'll see us right now in the off season. We do. We did go with the Navy helmet, um, so we did transition to an all Navy helmet. 
Um, stripes are a little different on the helmet. Uh, we do have, we still going with the classic SC. Um, that's kind of who we are. Um, but then, uh, yeah, there's some other uniform mixes in there. And we also have, we're fortunate enough to have a um, cause game this year. Yep. I uh, know that new, new day foundation. Um, so we'll be able to, to, to pull one of those cause game jerseys out um, with a lot of other events that we have throughout the year. And when you look at you guys heading into the year, um, when you look at Stony Creek, I've always looked at, I always looked at Stony Creek and it, they have one of the, um, how is it, you know, I mean, how much has coach bell and coach Blackstock been, been getting, getting you ready to take this job? How much impact did they made on you? Oh, they, they, they've done everything for me. They've done, they've made a huge impact for me. Obviously also my, my dad, who's been a long time head football coach, um, you know, for a number of years, he's kind of, kind of molded me into the person that I am and kind of allowed me to pursue this opportunity. But, uh, you know, that was one of the biggest things when I was able to take that job six years ago at Lake Orion, that, uh, those guys gave me opportunity and chance and, uh, coach Bell and coach Blackstock. And I appreciate everything they've done. And they've given me a lot of different roles and responsibilities to not only be a defensive coordinator, but put me in a situation to handle some of the situations that head coaches might be put in. Um, so, you know, I, I owe a lot of the stuff to them, obviously, as well as my dad as well. But, um, uh, you know, they've taught me a lot at Lake Orion, and, um, you know, I really appreciate everything that they've done for me. How are you going to feel week two when Lake Orion comes in there, comes to Stony Creek to take on the Cougars? I mean, like, you know, you're going to – how how are you going to feel, I mean, mindset-wise? Because I know, um, you know, you bring – I mean, like, you know, I mean, going against your former team, I mean, that's not going to be an easy, easy feeling for you. No, uh, I mean, our biggest thing is, like I said earlier, we just want to take every one game at a time. Uh, we don't want to make the moment too big or too small. Um, and, and for me, you just want to make it fun. You know, I, I, I still have a good relationship with all those guys there. Uh, there's no hard feelings. I still talk to a lot of those guys on a consistent basis. I mean, there's, there's really no secrets behind what they do, uh, what we do, you know, so um, it's just going to be a fun game that, that we're going to be part of and um, share that opportunity with some of those guys. And hopefully at the end of the day, whether whoever wins or losses, we can cross those sidelines and uh, shake hands in the middle of the field and, kind of reminisce on some old good times, but also talk about the future and um, how we can make our programs the best possible programs to be. How is the program strength looking over there? I mean, like, obviously you got Hart Middle School there um, right next to you. How's program strength been for you guys? Uh, yeah, so that's awesome. Uh, a cool thing that we have is uh, obviously we have the Hart Middle School, which is right across the street. Um, they, you know, they get a lot of good numbers. We're at about uh, a little bit over 50, 51 or 52 on the freshman class right now. So we're really excited for the, for the future of the program. Um, you know, our, our current freshmen are going to be sophomores. They went undefeated last year. So yep. the future looks bright in, in those couple classes, obviously with what we're trying to build with the upper class right now as well. Um, but we also have the Stony Creek junior Cougars, which is a youth organization that, uh, th three through sixth grade that, uh, participated with that. And, um, that's been awesome for us to kind of get involved with that a little bit more. And you know, I think that'll progress as time comes, you know, right now, obviously our main focus was with the high school kids right now, but, uh, we, I have done a lot with that. We do hold some youth camps um with those kids to get that going uh and then obviously the rochester redskins and that that you know there's variance with that because some of those guys go to hard and or go to uh, excuse me rochester and rochester adams uh but we do have a handful of kids that come from that program as well to stony creek so um it's been a been an awesome experience kind of getting didn't know each of those um individual groups and um uh, being able to work with them and super excited to to kind of put it all together as, as the years progress before i let you go coach powell um what is the expectations this year at Stony Creek? I mean, like, I know, um, you know, when you look at transition periods, and I know you learned this from, um, you know, and I know you watched the 04 Detroit Pistons with Larry Brown, you know what I mean, when Joe Dumars said there has to be a transition period and it has to happen during the season. So what, are you, what, is, what is that thought process, and then what is your expectations heading into the year? Yeah, I mean, I think it comes back to the whole thing of talking about that, that playing with that elite mindset and developing that elite mindset. Um, and really the two things that come to mind for, for me is to, uh, compete and to be consistent. And I think, you know, you could say transition year, you could say like our goal is just to on a daily basis, whether it's practice game training, whatever, we just want to compete and we want to compete and be consistent in what we do. Um, so, you know, there's really no peaks and valleys up and downs. We want to go at a steady climb and get 1% better and, and compete at a daily basis and, and really be consistent with what we do while doing that. Obviously we're trying to perform with our elite mindset, um, and trying, to, and trying to go into every single game that, that we can compete, that we're able to uh, to play with these guys and hopefully one day give us a chance to get back in the red. But uh, like I said, for right now, we're just trying to take it day by day, step by step, and uh, focus on being consistent in everything that we do. 
Thunder Creek Coach Rick Powell here. Um, thank you for joining us this week here on the podcast. Um, obviously, wish you the best of luck this year, and I will see you at Media Day. I appreciate it, and uh, again, thanks for the opportunity. And uh, you know, it's always good uh, being alongside you guys for the last few years as well. So, thanks for the opportunity, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thank you really much, Stony Creek Coach right. Rick Powell here. Um, thank you for joining us this week here on the podcast. Um, okay, here before we sign off here, make sure um, I wish everybody the happy Fourth of July. Um, before I sign off, um, wish everybody the best of luck. Um, you know during the off season and um, stay safe. God bless, and I'll see you all next week. Take care. God bless, and see you all then. See you all next week. God bless. Y'all.